Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by. And today's video, we've got this lovely pair of Riemann Wells wristwatches. His and hers. See one slightly larger than the other. Now we are gonna get rid of that strap. We'll uh, give the case a bit of a, a polish up. The hands do turn, but it's fully wound up. It won't wind up anymore and it's not running. However, the ladies does wind. And also the hands do set. As you can see there, it's a bit scratched the case. And this strap is absolutely awful. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm probably gonna make a, a couple of new straps for this one. Oh, can you see that? I think that's come from that staple that's through it. Is a bit grim. I can go straight in the bin. And get any crud off the end of my uh, watch strap removing tool. As we can see, it's gold plated. I think that's 10 microns. Gonna go with the, the small one first. That case does need a, a bit of a clean, a bit of a polish. I'm gonna keep these crystals in them. I haven't got any square ones, so what we'll have to do is just give them a bit of a polish. We can take the movement out and away. Yep, Raymond wheel. No dates in there. I need my finger cuts on. As you can see, that one's running. We'll see how well a little later. In the meantime, we'll put it back in the case, put it to one side. And then we can take a look at the men's one. Get rid of these strap bars. So I'll put some new ones in. Now I do like the crown on these. I've got that blue jewel. Again, gold plated. Now can you see there that slot? That's to open the case. By the looks of it, somebody's not bothered. And again, we'll give the case a polish, clean that crystal. There's a, a date in the, the back there, I think. It's the 23rd of the 11th, 80. So that was probably around the time 
That one you. I've got a feeling these particular pair were from the 80s. As you can see, that's not running, and there's something on the pallet fork jewel there. So we're going to start with this one. And we can take the hands off first. And all I'm doing there is putting a little bit of silicon over the top. That will protect the dial when I want to get my hand tools on. And they just slot under it and you can lever off the hands then. It's easier just to tip the hands into your tub. Now there's no seconds hand on this, so I haven't got to worry about any fine pivots sticking through. What I will need to do is take the dial off. And to do that, there's two dial screws. So we'll just loosen them up. And then when it comes to cleaning, I just tighten those back up and then that way they don't go missing. If you just leave them, you do run the risk of them working loose and you have to go hunting. But it's interesting that both these movements are exactly the same. It's just the male watch has got a, a bigger dial and a bigger case. Look where that landed, right on top of there. I was lucky. That's just the dial washer. It keeps a, a little bit of distance between the movement and the dial. But yeah, both exactly the same movements. I mean, the only difference is this one's got the brass or gold plate there. As you saw, the other one was silver. But when you put a bit of pressure on the winder, it starts to, to run. Not very well. Can you see that oil on that pallet fork jewel? That's probably not helping. Almost definitely not helping. So we'll take the, the power out of the main spring. And we just move this click out of the way and let it gently unwind. Again, what you don't want to do is release the power all at once if you can help it. And then with the power out, we'll take this balance spring out. Put that somewhere safe. It's quite a unusual shape. So it doesn't sit very well in my holder. So you might see it flop about a little bit. I just have to make sure I don't put too much pressure on and have it flying out. Now what's going on with that spring? Oh. Don't know if you can see that, but it is saturated in what I would presume to be old oil. It's gone very gelatinous. So that is probably the root cause. As you can see there, can you, it's still stuck to the top, to the bridge. So I'll move that out of the way. Have a little look at the jewels. There's a bit of crud there.
but everything looks pretty good. You can take the winding stem out. Now I always love those press action winding stems rather than the small screw. And we can take the ratchet wheel off. Oh, I do like that. See that click spring. There's no real risk of losing that. Now again, with those particular wheels, the reversing wheels, they're usually left-handed thread. So to undo it, you turn it right, and then to do it up, you turn it left. Opposite to the norm. And then there's three screws holding this bridge on. I'm just resting them on the top, having a little look. See if there's any difference between any of them, and there isn't. Then we can lift away the bridge. I made a slight rocky error. What I should have done was taken off the cannon pinion first. But I haven't. It's not a, a big issue, but just means I'll have to take that off before I can remove the centre wheel. These jewels look okay. Need a bit of a clean, but apart from that, there's no cracks. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on top of a light. Because what you'll find, if there are any cracks, that will highlight them. But these are just dirty. So we're going to start removing the trainer wheels. Now can you see that escape wheel there? That's in a slot under the plate. And then my movement hold is in the way. So I'll turn it over. We'll take off the cannon pinion. And while we're doing that, the main spring barrel falls out. Now my cannon pinion removal tool here is not great. So I'll try a, a pair of sturdy tweezers. And even they don't work. So at this point I'm thinking maybe I might try my hand removal tools, see if I can get underneath them and lever them up. As you can see the escape wheels just fell out. Now the problem I've got here is I can't get the tools underneath to pry it away. There's too many things around. So what I'm going to resort to is using a pin vise. Yeah, I've pulled it out of the movement. There. So that's now out. And as you can see, the winding pinion and clutch have fell out. There's the cannon pinion. 
and then we can remove that center wheel now now we can take out the pallet forks and again that pallet fork should just fall away by the looks there's a bit of dried oil there again I'm sorry about the camera on my microscope it's not a, an autofocus one. Sometimes I can see it in focus in, in the eyes, but the camera is just slightly out. And then with all of the, that side done, we can turn it over now and concentrate on the keyless works. Now while we disassemble the keyless works, I would like to apologize it's been a little while since my last video, but unfortunately, real life has got in the way. Mrs. Horology Hubbub has had me decorating, which has meant I haven't really had any spare time, and also my office stroke workshop has been filled with all sorts. But now that's done, I can get back to doing these videos. Now I did have another video almost finished and when I say almost finished I started to reassemble it and found I now need some parts so I've got to try and source those how long that's going to take I don't know just having a little look at that intermediate wheel there as you can see it's chamfered down the bottom so there's a, a right way and a wrong way We'll peg out the jewel holes before cleaning. But as I was saying, I am waiting now for some parts, see if I can source them. If not, see if I can get somebody to make me some. But again, that's a, a lovely pocket watch with a key. So it has a key works. Something I've never worked on before. And we do clean the pivots on all of the wheels. And to clean these, I use a bit of ever stick in a, a pin vise. And then we can now look at taking the mainspring out of the barrel. It's quite a small barrel goes the lid and I'm going to use my pin vise take out the barrel arbor and with that out of the way we can take the spring out I'm just gently walking the spring out of the main barrel And these can unleash with a bit of force, scattering parts. So make sure they're, they're out of the way. In your tub there. Now, oh, look at that. I've taken out the jewels and I've reinstalled the balance ready for cleaning and I saw this so I thought I would show you but can you see I don't know what it is whether it's oil that has gone thick and gelatinous or if the previous watchmaker sneezed and you can see in between the spring at the top there also is some of that so we might need to run that through a couple of times but we'll get it loaded into the basket ready for cleaning and while that's going on 
I'll tell you a little bit about Raymond Well. Now in 1976, during a, a challenging period in the watch industry, he decided he was going to establish his own company. And his vision was to create timepieces that would redefine Swiss watchmaking, combining elegance, craftsmanship and affordability. And he did gain a bit of a claim as he gradually built an international network and the brand became one of the flagships of the Swiss watchmaking industry. And in 1982, his son-in-law, Olivia, he joined the business and he decided he was gonna modernize the company's structure. He expanded markets and took charge of communications and marketing. You see all of that crud around there. Yeah. I'm just going to clean these before they go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now the last thing I'm going to say on the brand is that music does play a heavy part with collections named after Mozart, Beethoven and Verdi. In the early 90s they uh, they launched the Parsifal collection. They also have the, the tango, the tradition. And they are probably one of the last family owned watch companies there are. So they are definitely worth a look. I just add in a bit of uh, cleaning solution into the ultrasonic cleaner and we can get the case front and back in there. And while these are cleaning up, I would like to give a quick shout out to Barry Two Clocks. You know who you are. We've been having some conversations via email and he's uh, been restoring a beautiful Roma wrist watch. I'm going to put a picture up onto the screen now. I hope he doesn't mind. But I think he's done a fantastic job. I think it's great that he's actually attempted this and he uh, allowed me to come along for some of the journey with our emails. Thank you, Barry. And back to this movement. It's all clean. Now what we're going to do is oil the capsules. So get them into place while the balance is still on the movement. A spot of oil roughly in the middle. And then pop the chaton back on. And then we can put that in. That's that spring back in. Now for anyone that's uh, unsure what that actually does, is that helps stop the balance spring pivot from breaking should you have a, a shock to the watch. Can you see how dirty that jewel is? Give it a, a bit of a clean with some pegwood. This can be a bit risky, because sometimes you can, just like that, make it ping off. As I was saying, it helps to stop the pivot breaking should you have any shocks to the watch. It's a great invention. And then with that jewel clean, we can add some oil. Now it's the size of these things, they are absolutely tiny. And 
when I'm doing those, I'm just flipping it over and then we can put it into the movement. And already that's a, a good sign. That balance spring just rocking before it was absolutely solid. So what I'm hoping now is we'll get this jewel in. We give a bit of a blow and I'm hoping to see it spin freely. Just like that. So that was the problem with this movement was all of that oil around this balance spring I mean where that cap jewel was. That all dried and kind of like a jelly. So we can start assembling the rest of the movement starting with the main spring. Now before putting that into the barrel what I'm going to do is grease it. And I've got a bit of a watchmaker's tissue there. I've just folded up into a little strip. I'll put a little bit of grease on. And then I'll also put some grease onto my fingers. And then I'll rub that in. See I don't like using finger cuts when putting springs back into the main spring barrel. And that's because sometimes it can get trapped in between and leave little bits of rubber in there. Oh, drop in the spring there. I went in between my legs, caught it with my knees. Now, like I say, I don't don't like to wear finger cuts. I put a bit of grease on, and the way I figure is there's grease, the same grease on the spring, so. The grease from my fingers isn't going to do any damage and then what residual grease there is on the actual barrel we can wipe off and again this can be quite tricky but it's just a case of again as you've walked it out you walk it back in And then we need to get the barrel lava back in. And I do I like to use a pin vise to do that. Some people will use tweezers. I generally find I bend my tweezers because I'm squeezing too hard. Just with a pin vise it just slots in nicely for me. And then I know we've greased the spring lightly but I will add a, a little bit of oil and we can get the lid on get it closed Now, this jewel that I'm oiling now should actually come out, but it does need a a, uh, a keeve tool. Now I have three of them, and they're all too big. So what I am doing is I'm just using a, an oiler to try and get some oil just down into that hole and then we can put the escape wheel in now you've got to do that before you put it into the movement holder and we'll add a drop of oil into the mainspring barrel arbor hole wipe away any excess there And then we can carry on assembling the trainer wheels. The next thing is the 
fourth wheel and then the third wheel. And they're all quite close. And we can come in with a centre wheel. Before we do, we'll add a bit of oil. Now I thought I had the, the hole there, but I didn't, obviously. I'm looking straight down through a microscope. Put the main spring in. Knock all of the other wheels. And then we can line the bridge up. I got a trusty bit of pegwood. Watchmaker's favourite tool. Up. try and start to get these pivots into the, the holes now they're almost all in there except for the escape wheel I'm just gonna manipulate the wheels a bit sometimes rocking them backwards and forwards can get the pivots to drop into the jewel holes Sometimes you've just got to resort to gently manipulating the escape wheel into the hole. Anyway, you'll, you'll feel it just dropping. Don't put any pressure. A bit of pegwood is just stopping that from going anywhere. That bridge I'm going to use my oiler can you see the pivot in the jewel hole there it's just moving around the outside of the actual hole and what we're trying to do is just get it to drop in got it and then everything's moving freely so we get the screws in You see the movement rocking in the holder a bit there. Now it is only a, a cheap holder. I think I will have to invest on getting a bit of a better one. We get those screws tighten down and come in with the last one what I'm doing there is I'm just laying it on top of the bridge so I can drop it into the hole and then we can reinstall the click spring I oh, do I absolutely love this click spring 
I think it's genius. There's no little springs that can launch themselves into space. I'm just adding a, a little bit of grease on before it goes in. I will wipe away the excess. using a bit of Rodico to clean any mess up. Just put a bit of oil on the, the top there of the mainspring barrel arbor. And again, come in with some Rodico and remove the click spring. And we can put the ratchet wheel back on. Now this screw is a normal threaded screw. We can add a bit of oil where the crown wheel is going to go. And then this is the one with the the left-handed threaded screw. So once the screw's in, I can then again tidy up any mess with a bit of Rodico. And we can turn the movement over and start on the keyless works. Put the clutch in, add a bit of grease to the clutch. And that's the, the channel where the yoke will run or sit. And we can put the winding pinion in. We're just greasing up the, the hole where the, the release button goes for the winding stem. Oil up these posts ready for the wheels to go back in. And again, this is the wheel that has that chamfered end which goes down. And again, that engages when you pull out the winding stem to adjust the hands. And put the minute wheel in. And then the yoke. And I'm just going to add a bit of grease where these two parts meet. And then along the back of the yoke where the yoke spring will go. oil on the post for the oak spring sorry for the oak I can hold everything down with a bit of pegwood and then clean up my mess and then 
holding a breath we can install the oak spring and get it into place and then again a trusty bit of pegwood pin it down and then we'll wrestle it into place and then very gently once we're confident we can take things away now I've taken that off because I'm going to put the cannon pinion on and I don't want to do any damage to the cannon pinion I've just put the tiniest bit of grease there firmly press it down and go back in with a minute wheel and then we can get the cover spring back in screws in and get it tightened up sorry about my fingers in the way there and again just laying it on the top so I can drop it into the hole tightened up and add a bit of grease to this little claw and then drop that over onto that post and clean away any mess We'll grease up the winding stem before putting that in. And then what we will have to do is Turn it over and then press on that little button so we can push it in. Activate it, push it in and out, spread the grease around a bit. Make sure things turn as they should. And then we can put it back in the holder and put the pallet fork in. Pallet fork cocking. Now we can put a bit of power into the mainspring. 
and then we can test that pallet fork make sure it flicks over as it should which it's doing nicely and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this grease onto the end of these pallet fork jewels and then we'll get an oiler and rock that backwards and forwards four or five times and then add a bit more and repeat the process and can you see there that clean balance spring now if you remember when we took it out it was all stuck to the top of the plate it's the moment of truth will it run There we go, yes it will. Ah, that's what I like to see. So we can put this screw in, tighten it down. Once that's tightened down, oh, be careful aid. we can come in and do the oiling. Now this top plate, nice and easy. However, wait until we get to the underside. Now you remember that escape wheel went into that slot and that slot is where the two jewels are so I'm just gonna use another oiler stop the watch from running so I can reach the holes and just a drop of oil So first on the time grapher is the lady's watch, the one that was running. And that's only just running by the looks of it really. It's not getting a very good reading. I just suspect it's dirty. And then this is the one that we've just serviced. off the bat pretty terrible a little bit of adjusting what we're going to do first is get it all back into the case so that I'm mean getting the dial on I'm just going to give it a, a bit of clean with just a bit of warm water now this dial as you'll see in a minute or two isn't a printed dial and they're actually enamel Roman numerals so we're quite safe using a bit of water so before we put the dial back on we'll have to put the hour wheel in and then the dial washer and this just keeps it separated from the movement a little bit. And we can go on with that lovely dial. Do those dial feet screws up. Obviously I loosen these before putting the dial on. And we can put the hands back on. It really doesn't matter where where they are. You can put it on and then set it to an hour. It's 
just like to spin it around, make sure it does go around all the way without fouling anywhere. Now, the minute hand. Make sure those hands don't foul against each other. rid of that hair it's been doing my head in. Now I have give the cases a bit of a polish and you should see that shortly. But in the meantime what we are going to do is disassemble the ladies movement and give that a clean and what I won't do it being exactly the same movement I'm just gonna fast forward through this you can see I learned from my previous mistakes we just go through get it disassembled get it in the cleaning machine Get it reassembled. Then we can get them both back on the time grapher. Get them adjusted and see how well they run. So it'll just be the disassembly I'll show you. Obviously the reassembly is uh, exactly the same. I didn't find anything of interest to show you guys in this this movement. It really is all needed is a, a clean and an oil. So there's no surprises like that. First movement with the balance spring and all of that oil. Okay, so after some adjustments, let's see what we've got. And this is the ladies watch. So plus one second. And this is the man's watch. That's minus four seconds. Like I say, I do uh, Give the case clean and the old crispy shed with me drill. And the belt wheels. I'm just lightly going across. I don't want to remove any of the gold really. Got a lot of learning to do with gold plating again so where I can I'll just buff it up and then we'll make a couple of straps now there are videos out there that go into this in a far better detail and things like that I mean I've only probably made a dozen straps and a half of those were scrap and it's only been the past four or five that have been any good really what I do is I first mark it out now this bit of leather is the back of the strap 
Just using a rotary cutter just to roughly cut it out. And then what I'll do is I'll use then the ruler and the Stanley blade. A nice sharp blade. They finally got that splash of colour, it's so desperately needed. To trim it to his exact size. Wednesday, right? And then I use this this tool. Now I I spent probably 25 quid I think on a, a leather tool kit this was one of the things that came in in the kit and it's a sharp blade and it's great for going around these corners so just rock it backwards and forwards and follow the line now you do have to sharpen it regularly it's blunt pretty quick I mean the tools like I say they were only cheap I think I got this blade in there and there was that other tool just to the the top there next to the knife again I don't know what any of these are or what they're called what I'm doing now is I'm marking out a template on the, the lever for the top of the strap now again, these thinking, these bits of leather feeling, are the what I call scrap leather. That's easy. I think that this now is I got them off like it was Etsy, just to have a go at making straps. So I am starting to come to the end of it. I three about so I might actually invest in some slightly better leather next time. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just skiving the leather down. Is everything okay? Where they're gonna both meet. You can't hide in there for the rest of the session. I'm alright. So you know, what you don't want are any uh, ridges really. You want it to be nice and smooth yeah. on the back of the strap. And any ridges and sharp edges all just dig into your wrist. And they can always sit in front of the telly when I'm making straps. Oh, sorry if you can hear in the background what's going on. Hopefully I don't get penalised by YouTube. And then what we're doing now is we're adding a bit of glue. It's like a contact adhesive almost, so spread it on, let it go off a little bit. It's very reminiscent actually of... The uh, the glue you used to use at school, the PVA stuff. But it is obviously designed for leather. You can see that's where we're going to join it. And I'll use this little roller. And we're going to repeat the same process pretty much for the other side of the strap. So this is the one that will have the buckle. So I'm just creating the loop. That will... Uh, Hold the buckle. That's all I got. My mom says some wolves are late bloomers, but I've been to the best lichenologist. I've had to play in Milwaukee, would you believe it? But again, I've already glued these and she says there's a chance that I never let the glue go off a little bit. Now, at that point, the camera stopped. I'd run out of memory on the memory card I didn't realise so I do apologise but now they are together and we're going to create the holes for the stitching Now this is probably my worst part I do sometimes go off this line and you do notice it with the stitching once the holes are done, we can get it into this clamp. It's, as you can see, it's homemade. But this will hold the strap 
so I can stitch it and what we're going to do is just thread the needles onto the cotton first and once you go through the eye if you then puncture the, the thread and then pull that down it will create a natural knot As you can see, we've got two needles, one on each end. Just level them up. And I'll start one hole back and then go to the top one. You go through one side and come back through the other side with the other needle. And then pull it tight. Now you lift one arm up and lower one arm. I can never remember which is which. And I can sometimes switch going through. So this is when I say this isn't the my best part, that's what I mean. And you will see. You know, on some of the strap the straps I do, the, the stitching isn't quite straight, but again, it's all a learning curve. Now I will leave a, a link to another channel, Saving Time. As well as being an excellent watchmaker, he's very good at making watch straps and an his videos are, are far better than, than mine. But if enough people do ask and really want me to, I'll uh, have a go at making a, a decent video of making a watch strap. But again, it's not exactly my forte. So with both straps made, let's see what we're left with. Again, like I say, you can see the stitching is not brilliant. But it's a good effort. And then if we have a little look, see what it looks like on the wrist. And I'd like to thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you on the next one.